Hello everybody, hope that you are doing very well and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where we are going to be going into the Bitcoin chart here, looking at the range and how it has progressed since the last video and where this is likely to be heading in the short term. So I hope that you thoroughly enjoyed this one and let's get into the charts. So as we know, we've been inside of this range now for one whole over a month now, 32 days from the first time we touched the weekly to where we are now, 32 days later, as we can see, well, we've had great respect off of the low of the channel, okay? And then the last time we've come up to the high of the weeklies, as we then know over the last few weeks, we've come down to the low once more, back up to the highs, and we've actually had a partial decline here. And you can see from the low, sorry, from the higher weekly, <laughs> from the higher weekly, we come down to the 618 Fibonacci level. And as you know, this is where we had that 76% probabilities of it actually bouncing off the lower CC. That's exactly what it done. And you can see it's made its way up here with its higher highs and higher lows. This is one I was pretty proud of because back on the 2nd of October, I was giving my team the long setup, which is really simply obviously an entry, a stop loss and a target. And this is, I'm, I'm happy about this one because it was giving everybody the bullish setup, obviously within the champions group, giving everybody a bullish setup while the majority are very bearish because this was off the back of obviously a big move to the downside, a secondary big move to the downside. And we were literally hovering at those lows but me being a, a trader that likes to counter trade the majority, while the majority are looking for shorts, obviously we're looking for longs that paid. And we now see ourselves up around 10,750. You do remember I was giving those $100 increments where you had really important levels 10,850, 10,750, 10,550, <laughs> 10,450. You know, for some reason, the $50 in Bitcoin at the moment are just like magnets where price is just drawn to it. So you still do have those really relevant levels. So that's something to be aware of, by the way. Uh, but you can see here locally, okay, if we come down to, you know, one hour is fine, really. Low, high, higher low, higher 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 high, potentially higher low. All we're doing is we are making bullish market structure, okay, with its higher highs and higher lows. So you, you one could say you don't need to stand in front of the train or you don't need to stand, I guess, about, you just don't need to stand in front of the trend because the trend is still up, isn't it? It's still making its higher highs and higher lows. So the trend locally here on the one hour chart is very much bullish off of the back of bouncing off of the CC. OK, obviously coming down to support, trapping lots of shorts at the lows. And then you get well, it's not really can't really be classed so much as a short squeeze, but the bullish market structure out of it. And I suppose this is the, well, this is one that I'm most proud of. If we go over to the MEX chart a second, we obviously look at what, you know, the triangle that we have going on here. And what you can, you know, cast your minds back to when I first gave this triangle. And it's kind of amazing, really, how it's progressed. Um, you know, from, from where it progressed, you know, last month, we were recognizing where the low was going to be put in, the high was going to be put in, and then the next low was going to be put in. And each step of the way, this has been traded with so much precision obviously getting the correct low and then getting the correct high and then getting the correct low, bringing us up to where we are now. So each step of the way, predictly, correct, correct, correctly predicting in advance exactly how these next few weeks we're going to be trading. That is a prediction and a half, ladies and gentlemen. It really is. And then it obviously leaves you now in the situation of, okay, you have more of a symmetrical triangle going on here. So we can just like ignore this. And what we can say is we have a symmetrical triangle. So you could be saying, okay, if this breaks to the upside, we trade it up to around 11,500. If this breaks to the downside, we trade it down to 9,500 sort of thing. So then you've got that big, big breakout opportunity that will bring you to much higher prices or much lower prices. And this is the thing with triangles. Obviously, you know, you can obviously fake out of them and it goes like this or it goes like this. So that, that's the one step of caution that you have to trade. But at the end of the day, you have an absolute perfect symmetrical triangle. So you could be looking at this bullishly if it breaks to the upside or bearishly if it breaks to the downside, obviously fading the move. But at the end of the day, the prediction of the triangle, each step of the way to the highs and to the lows traded with absolute precision. Even the way that you see where it bounced off the lower minus one here, absolute just absolute i'm just very proud of this i must admit but like off of the fibs taking the lows coming back putting in the high on obviously the volatility thursday high on the volatility thursday coming down to the negative one building its way back up i mean 
yeah, I must admit, I'm, I'm proud of that one, uh, <laughs> to be honest. But, you know, that, that's what we got going on, obviously, on a medium or medium term time frame. High, lower high, lower high, curling that price action. Low, higher low, higher low, curling that price action. So there's a few ways that you can look at it. You've got the triangle going on. <laughs> and I, I, obviously, I don't use Twitter anymore, but I would be very intrigued to know how many people are now, oh, here's a triangle. And I'm like, yeah, I, I saw this triangle three weeks ago. <laughs> um anyway uh yeah and then obviously another perspective because as, as again there's there's several different ways that you can view the chart and we're not saying one raise right and one raise wrong but we're saying you know you can use these different tools for confluence to get the highest probability trade so whether you're looking at it as a triangle whether you're looking at it as a range whether you're placing some fibs on this whether you're using elliott waves whether you've got your pitch faults going on in here it's all the same way to get it's this it's different analysis to get to the same place so that's what we're attempting to do here to get to the same place of okay what's the next best trade uh i'm not going to be sharing my position in this this video today on the for the public uh the champions know exactly what i'm doing and they know my trade but i think that you've got to use your own brain for this public video you've got to try and work out okay I guess you can try and think, what is Daniel's trade here? What is he going for? Obviously, we are in absolute bullish market structure after getting a partial decline in a, in a, in a, in a bullish range. So you got to try and think to yourself, what is my next best trade? Um, but, you know, I've presented some opinions here. I've obviously gone over once again that triangle, which has come to its conclusion. But we also now have this really, really, really nice range with key weekly and key weekly resistances and supports. You got that key, key, key CC Fibonacci level, which did act as support as predicted, obviously off the back of looking for those longs while everybody was still very bearish. We got the moves out of this and it's it's now coming, one would say it feels as if it's coming to a conclusion. It's coming to a breakout in the near future, okay? You could still potentially see another week with inside this range. It's, it's possible another week, but one would expect that well, we are very much coming to the conclusion just because simply because we're coming to the end of those trend lines and it is going to have to break one way or another, be it a break sideways, but more likely, obviously, a bigger break of your, you know, your smaller and smaller contracting, that's the word I'm looking for, contracting price action. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm very content with how this move has been going. Uh, obviously done some pretty nice trades, handing money on a plate to everybody in the group because... That's what I do. And, uh, you know, now we're looking up uh, towards these highs. Again, 10,750, 10,850, 10,915, your, your next local resistances. If you start to break out of this, yeah, you're, you're looking for very, very, very bullishly to up to around 11,000 plus. And obviously on, on the flip side, you still got 10,650 below you as, as an important support level, uh, which for me has been a support level for a very long time. And now you're obviously back above that level. Very big support below you then 10,550, 10,450 down to 10, 250 being the low of the weekly. So overall, you're still range bound here on Bitcoin. Uh, obviously, this is when a lot of people go to sleep or they turn off. And I think that this is like the wrong thing to do. You can't just like turn off and think, oh, I'll just come back when it breaks. Like you do want to be monitoring the charts because there's always new information that you can get. And this is why from one day, you know, if you're actually trading this properly, one day you can be very bullish and then the next day you can be very bearish if there's actually been a reason to change and some people will flip flop biases way too easily but if you do have an absolute you know an absolute reason to do that say that you have, see a really big divergence form or you see a really big drop in open interest etc then naturally it's absolutely fine to to switch biases if you have the you know the tools to do that but um that, that, that's the way that i'll be looking at it. don't fall asleep you know you've got to keep tracking the charts and that way you are one step ahead of the you're one step ahead of the market where the majority are falling asleep and they'll be here trading the breakout. Whereas, whereas if you can predict the way the breakout is going to be, well, you're one step of the market. You're not scrambling to get into the, the market while it's breaking out, but you're actually ahead of the market. You're sat comfortably in a position and you are relaxed while everybody else is, what do I do next? You know, that, that's the advantage of having obviously a, a nice plan here. And uh, yeah, there we go. That's my analysis of today. It's been a little bit quicker um it's not oh there's just not so much for me that i need to cover i've obviously covered that what i feel is prediction of the year triangle and uh then the local range that we have going on within this um so yeah i guess i will say hopefully you have enjoyed this video as always i would say if you have i would appreciate a like down below if you haven't enjoyed it you can just give a dislike that's totally fine and i would say 
Uh, hope you thoroughly enjoy trading this. If you would like to know how I personally am trading this with my exact entries, uh, then obviously this is stuff I share over in the Champions group and what a, what a few setups I've been giving recently, let's be honest. Um, you know, that's what you can look forward to. If not, then obviously we have a load of free material over on YouTube. There's now the technical analysis playlists, which is just, you know, free videos on on YouTube that you can get stuck into as well. So uh, yeah, there's all everything you need to succeed. I hope to see you succeeding and I will catch you in the next video. Cheers, everybody. Thank you and goodbye.